All right, here we go. All right, live on the Metal Voice. Alan, for the first time ever, we have a principal. Yes. <laughs> at least at least there are knowing. And you know what? I feel like I might make some grammatical mistakes, and I feel like I'm being judged in a sense. Yeah, grammatical, Jim, by the way. <laughs> it starts already. Sharon Burns, former principal of Eden High School, retired now. Thank you yes. for joining. Thank you for joining. Thanks the for having me. The face of persecuted heavy metal fans throughout the world. I think this is the first time. Up. Correct? Am I correct me if I'm wrong? This is the first time you've made a statement. Like, is uh, this is the first time? Exclusive, I, Alan. Exclusive. It is. I just I retired in boys. June, and uh, June 30th was my retirement date. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me, and I thought, oh, let's reach out back to a couple of people. And you're at the top of my list, Jimmy. So it's nice, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Here we go, Sharon. I, I reached out to you a year ago maybe eight months ago, right? <laughs> yeah. And I get it, and I get it, and I get it. You know, you're part of the public Gotta system. let the dust you settle. Know, you can't say nothing. They're muzzling you up. As Alan said, heavy metal persecution, right? Right. <laughs> okay, let me give the backstory here. Fast, fast, so everybody is up to speed, okay? Back in October 2021, Sharon Burns, the print, then principal of Eden High School in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, posted on her Instagram, her own personal Instagram, for my understanding, a uh, picture of you and your husband, right, at, at the back of the, the car, and I'll show the picture after. And then there was also another picture, which was the controversy, was Eddie the mascot of our Eddie the mascot of Iron Maiden with the 666 written in the hands. Oh my God! After that, the her in, your Instagram blew up. A uh, petition by uh, some of the parents, concerned parents, uh, to transfer you or remove you from your position, Go, not to fire you, just to remove you to another. Um, <laughs> to remove you to another school because you did not live up to their sort of uh, standards. You shall be removed <laughs> from the premises. 553 signatures were collected. And then there was a counter, a counter, Alan, a counter uh, uh, petition. 20 thousand students and friends and the community and people from all around the world signed it to keep you because they said you are a great teacher, a great principal, and they wanted to keep you there. And I'm going to be fair here, Sharon. Me and Al are going to be fair. Since we don't have the other side here, we'll try to be very objective. I'm not trying to Yes, of course. And, we're, and, and I My spoke to you before. My arm's still sore from signing 15,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, uh, Oh my God, somebody, Ken, is that Ken, your husband? No. Rob. Rob, okay. So anyway, somebody's trying to, uh, I'm going to, somebody's trying to uh, jump on, but I don't know how uh, they got the, this, this to jump on. They're not jumping on. Nobody's jumping yeah. on. Okay. So so I, I've been to St. Catharines. I actually bought my copy of ACDC High Voltage on vinyl in St. Catharines. And I, you know, I didn't see anybody burning witches back then. And uh, <laughs> so let's uh, let's just explain the community a little bit, the, the lovely town of St. Catharines and, uh, and where you're from. So uh, the school, Eden, is a fabulous school. Uh, it was a private Christian school until 1989. And then it became amalgamated with um, the board. So with the public board. And I think that, uh, I think that a lot of parents uh, had their parents go to Eden, and it's it's been a very long-running school, private Christian school in the Niagara region. Students can apply to co go there from the entire Niagara region, from Niagara Falls to Fort Erie to St. Catharines. So, um, and they used to go when it was a private Christian school because of the Christian component to it. But things changed when it became a public school and it had to become a public school for everybody. So that's a bit of the history. Uh, there are a lot of people, uh, students at Eden, like I said, who have many, many siblings, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles who have attended there for the Christian component, but now it's just wide open. And the Christian component, and I can't pronounce it properly, Mennonite. Mennonite, yeah. I have trouble yeah, with that so word, Alan, Mennonite. It's a very complicated. How to write Mennonite. And, and, and to be fair to them, you know, they, they have this history of a Mennonite community and they attend it there and they have this sort of culture that they built there. So that's why they were very concerned, correct? Correct. 
But it was no longer part or the main focus of the curriculum since 89, you said. Right. So it's not part of the curriculum whatsoever, but Mm -hmm. uh, we still have uh, which uh, spiritual uh, life center at the school. And um, there are four volunteers who work there and students go to chapel and they go to life groups and it's uh, very well attended and liked by many of the students. So it's still a very vibrant part of what uh, that school is. And you, but there yourself, are other and you yourself are a Mennonite, correct? You were sort of raised that way, right? I was raised that way. Yes. Okay. All right. So we got, we've confirmed all that. We've, we've confirmed the community. We've confirmed yourself and, and other and, and since the 89s and the 70s and 100 years ago, there has been so many more different religions, right, that have come into play, correct? Right. Maybe. Right. And our school has opened that up to everybody. We uh, started a multi-faith prayer room a couple of years ago. So students who are practicing Islam can go and um, and, and have their prayers uh, in the afternoon on Fridays as well. So and that's in the same area as the Mennonite Chapel. And it seems to be working quite cohesively. It's, it seems to be working well for everybody. So very accommodating and welcoming school and an area. Right. Okay. But we've had to make some changes. I've been there for five years. I just retired in June. And there have, there's been some changes because, um, for example, our logo still had a cross in it Mm -hmm. and we're a public school and we're open to everybody. So we needed to make some things that uh, didn't put the Christianity at the forefront. So we removed the cross from the logo. So change has been hard for several members of the community because it's it was their school it was their mother's and father's school and now there's changes happening that looks as though we're trying to remove the christian christian component from the school that's not the case what eden is doing is uh creating an atmosphere where everybody can see themselves on the halls and in the walls of that school reflected right so they feel at home and I'm just questioning, is, is that part of uh, provincial legislation as well, where the cross has to be removed, or is that a decision that was um, based on, on local, uh, you know, you, you fellows at the school? So. Uh, it was a school board decision. Um, I know that uh, it's different in Quebec, but here it's a public school, so you shouldn't really be promoting one religion over another. Well, it's the same here in Quebec, uh, and I think the rest of Canada has taken also followed suit, right? It's anything to do with public should be sort of uh, you know um, secular, right? That's that's and, and but it does it doesn't mean you can't talk about religion. You could just but you have right. to sort of give equal share to everyone, right? Because that's right. that's the world that we live in, right? It's it's a multi religious world, yeah. We can get, get get to the photo. So so uh, you know, is okay, this let me, a, let me put up a the weekly photo tradition here. where you let head let out in the, the backyard here, and take these types of photos, or is that you know after you're burning Bibles and you decide to take these photos, or you know where was that taking place exactly? So it was a Mini Cooper rally. I have a Mini Cooper. It's kind of new to me. And the dealer puts, uh, you know, hosts this rally where a hundred Mini Coopers just line up in a row and we drive from one destination to the other. So we drove to Niagara Falls and we do an event there. We did the Whirlpool jet boats up and down the Niagara River. Uh, we drove for a few other places. And uh, my husband said, hey, there's a cost, you, you know, you can dress up your cars and there's prizes for cars. So I said, oh, go ahead and dress up the car. So he dressed up with the Iron Maiden paraphernalia, some of which you see behind me. And <laughs> Eddie. It's not like you don't have any. Right, exactly. So it was an easy um, costume for the car, I guess. And uh, I, I have, a, I had an Instagram and a Twitter account mm-hmm. that uh, was called at Eden Principal because it was me and it was my account. And I was trying to personalize uh, a lot of the events at the school and show them that uh, I'm a principal and I, you can reach out to me, you can connect with me, you can DM me and I'll answer your questions about uh, if tomorrow's a non-uniform day. Uh, the week before the rally, I had met a bunch of students, asked them what they were listening to and they were telling me metal. And I said, so oh, I listen to metal too. So we had a bit of a conversation. So it's not unusual for me to put up a personal photo mm-hmm. uh, to, to continue to connect with students. And that's the purpose of the photo that I put up well relatable you want to be relatable let's talk about the school year maybe yeah. new students are coming in and oh great idea 
So, right? so when you go back, congratulate. Day, when you go back the next day, they say, Oh, Mrs. Burns, you listen to Maiden. I listen to Maiden too. It's like, yeah, right. And then we just go about our day of learning. <laughs> okay, just but here's the here's where the trouble began, right? So, okay, there's one picture of you and your husband with you know the the the, the trunk open of the car with the maiden picture. It says our and that maiden. flag that's behind Alan, that's the same flag in the picture. Now there's a little Eddie, the little Eddie guy in back of you. Now I'm showing the picture that said Eddie in the heart 666. And that was the problem, correct? Right. That's right. Overkill. Um, yeah, definitely overkill. And if I Pushing could think of it, I would not have posted that. Uh, I, I think it, Rob made that. My husband made that. Just so as it's a his fun fault. Thing. Eddie loves Mini Coopers. <laughs> it actually says fault. Eddie in the heart, the Mini Coopers. And he threw this 666 in the heart. And uh, I knew that uh, it's a biblical, uh, has biblical connotations, religious connotations. Mm -hmm. I kind of knew that just for the year, but I didn't even think about it when we went. And when I posted the picture, I just thought, oh, that's a good picture of Eddie. And there's a good picture of me and my husband. I'll just throw those up on Instagram and go about my day. <laughs> Unbeknownst to you, <laughs> behind the scenes. Exactly. Unbeknownst to me, I go about my day. And at one point I have three teenage daughters. And at one point they reach out to me or come out to me and say, mom, you really have to look at your Instagram. I'm like what? What did I? And so I look at it and it, the comments under it have blown up. So I turned off commenting. I thought, okay, help me figure out what I did wrong here. And I realized it was the post of the 666 in a school where um, we were having this shift from uh, what they were used to from the private Christian school to amalgamating with the born. And I know that was 1989, but still it takes a long time for uh, good change to happen. And I get all that. So I realized, yeah, okay. I, I, I was, I was at the, at one end insensitive and at the other end offensive. I get it. So I took the post down. Okay. But let's go back one step. Were there any problems with you and the teach and the parents prior to this picture of Iron Maiden? Were there any petitions against no. you? Were there any sort of, oh, there's a woman in charge. We're not, we don't dig that. Nothing like that. No. So just to confirm that. No, none of that. There were some questions about some of the changes that we were making to the school. For example, the logo, mm -hmm. um, and some of the changes around uh, how the Spiritual Life Center communicated with the students in the building, yeah. changes that needed to happen. And there were some concerns from parents about those changes and uh, the way we were going about them, I guess, but nothing to have me removed, for example. Okay. So there's right. this so. underlying sentiment. Nobody likes change. We understand that. So there's a little underlying sentiment. And this was kind of like the spark that set off the powder keg, that one little photo with the heart specifically the heart with the six. Exactly. Right. Now, I mean, let's say, for example, you wrote six, six, seven. Do you think the parents would have lost it? I think that I don't know that. I don't know. I do think that some people associate still heavy metal with satanic practices. I know that's an extreme, but I think that they might have thought it was insensitive to have this, you know, this Eddie mm -hmm. in his skull and muscles and all of that uh, for a principal. And I understand that. Like, I get to, I'm trying to pick this apart here. Okay, I get the 666. The Eddie I don't get, and I don't get the Iron Maiden. So there's three things here, right? Right. I mean, if you want to really go into deep discussion about 666, they found the oldest manuscript they found of the Bible was actually 616. It wasn't even 666. So this whole number and this business of this number of being, you know, some sort of satanic. Yes, there's that connotation. But the reality is 666 really doesn't mean anything because a lot of people have said that this is just a numerical number of uh, Nero, who was the sort of uh, governor or whatever of the Roman Empire at the time. Right. So was it was it? The Iron Maiden, was it the Eddie mascot or was it the number that people had most offense with? If you, had, was a, it all three? If you had a picture of Barry Gibb holding <laughs> this card with 667, six, the house next door or across the street. Okay. Yeah. Now it was the number combined with the fact that they 
felt like I was trying to reduce Christianity in the school. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So, gotcha. I mean, we had the same, you know, Maiden had the same backlash in 82 when they released the album in North America. Yes. Uh, you think we've progressed beyond that point now. And it's a, you know, the West Memphis three in the early nineties. I mean, they were, you know, a conservative community. And uh, in, in Memphis, and uh, you know, basically the gist of it was three heavy metal guys got arrested because you know they got to be Satan worshippers, and they they have to be responsible for killing these other children. And you know, e even evidence of uh, Stephen King novels prove that you are a Satanist. So you know, we we're hoping to be way past that now. But I can understand now a bit more of the story where there's this underlying sensitivity, like you said, right. in the community. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I get it too. Also, if there was some parents who are taxpayers in a public institution, they want you know a fair representation right. of who leads their community. But to me, it sounds like it was an innocent mistake, and you know it. it you know we shouldn't bring out you know um, the tar and right. <laughs> the feathers, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Up until that, point, the only kind of personal things I would post are uh, of my chickens. I have a chickens. bit of a chicken. Farm back uh, Ozzy here. bit off a head off a chicken. Oh, I don't know. He's got a lot of, a lot of <laughs> vegan <laughs> tweets there could have happened. Chicken lady. So posting uh, my musical interest was the first time I've done that. And the last. At last, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, just to confirm that you, when did you take down the post when you saw the petition from the parents or was it prior to that? Prior to that, it was the same day. It was, I think it was a Sunday. And it was when my kids say, mom, look at your Instagram, it's blowing up. And I decided, yeah, okay, let's just delete the whole post. And, um, and maybe this all will be over tomorrow. So okay, that's, what, that's, <laughs> that's what I like to get to Monday morning. Now you're walking to school. Yes. Are they waiting with the handcuffs or? <laughs> no, it was, it was Good and quiet. You walk into school, and I was worried. Oh, yeah. everybody's looking at me, and everybody's uh, having an opinion or a judgment on me. So it was uncomfortable, but um, it was fine. It was more or less business as usual at school, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for that uh, community of students who, um, you know, didn't get on a bandwagon or didn't. Uh, wanted to tar and feather me. The kids were amazing and they got on with business. All right, let's talk about constitution here. So the constitution says the government has no right to intervene with uh, freedom of speech. This is a public, public school. So what I assume that sort of bleeds into your constitutional right working for the government, correct? Yes. Well, this was on your personal time though. Let's, can we, can we, you know, let's not forget that. Personal time, but under the name at Eden Principal. That's the problem. Oh, That's the problem, you. right? Good That's point. The problem. If it was just Sharon's Instagram, it'd yeah. be completely different. Right. Uh, somebody might have picked up on it if a parent might have seen it and had uh, an issue with it, but it was under at Eden Principal. Okay. And what constitution teacher. are you talking about, Jim? What constitution? I'm talking about the Canadian because Constitution here. The Canadian Constitution we, we can't greet the government to interfere. Hello, ma'am, or hello, sir, anymore here in Canada, right? <laughs> well, you can't well assume. they've kind of scrapped it over here in Canada. Yeah. But so I, I, I think you're a little behind the times, Jim, but in theory. <laughs> in theory, it should have worked like that. <laughs> okay, so there was no kickback from the students when you walk in, and uh, then a petition rumors of or you're well aware that there's a petition underway I was aware of the petition by that point and uh then and the phone calls were happening from concerned families uh and the press and um my boss is like what's going on over there Sharon? it's like oops uh, my phone's been ringing off the hook it's usually pretty quiet i can get a good nap in and now i, I gotta call sharon what's going on did you get any did you get any messages like you know, cult messages. Hey, Sharon, you know, you want to join the cult? And... <laughs> no, nothing like that. Come in this meeting next Tuesday. <laughs> okay, so again, establishing the timeline here. You post the picture, you take down at the picture out of good conscience, right? Right. However, you go back to school, everybody's whispering, there she is, there she is. And then there's this petition from concerned parents, about 500 people, right? 500 right. parents. And, you know, and to be fair, you know, they have a right to also, you know, um, 
to say. Yeah. But to get you transferred over a little mistake like that, I don't think that's the end of the world. Yeah. And to be fair, um, change.org, you, anybody in the world can have a vote on a poll on change.org. So I'm not even convinced it was 500 parents, 500 people. How many people in that it's school? It's connected to Eden. No, yeah. It could be globally. Somebody... Right. On the other side of the world, say, yeah, I don't like heavy metal. I'm, I'm down on this. So You know, it wow, reminds okay. me. And you know what, Alan, and, and I'll even share, we're all the same age. Uh, you know, you're younger than us. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. I don't think you're right, but thank you. <laughs> um, you know, the PRMC, you know, they're there, you know, back in the day. And, you know, they're trying to stop heavy metal. And there's always somebody trying to stop heavy metal. And Alan was talking about that before. I mean, why stop a form of music? Why start, stop artistic, uh, you know, expression? Sure, it's a little doomy and darky, but is it any different than a horror movie? I don't think they were trying to stop the music. They were trying to stop the Eden principle from mm -hmm. taking more away from, uh, from, e from the school, from the Christian okay. component that some students can, uh, can, you know, go to if they're interested in. I got gotcha. you. That's, to be, that's a fair statement. That's a fair at statement. least and offensive. And okay. I get it. Okay. Okay. So, so, so this explodes globally. You know, it's a hot topic. Wake up one that Monday morning, probably, or Tuesday morning. We all see this on the internet. And we're basically talking about 500 clicks. Right. So why would this be such a big story? I think it goes back to Jimmy's last question. Is why, you know, if somebody's trying to persecute a heavy metal fan, I think is what people are taking away from this. And, you know, you've explained that that's not necessarily the case. So. It's not necessarily the case. So then the counter petition started and that was started by a student. I didn't know who it was for a long time. And then I learned out who it is. And thank you for that. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks, Steve Harris. But, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, it was. Uh, and and when the counter petition started, it talked about, oh, she's a good principal. You know, don't worry about that. She's not a Satanist. All is cool over here. It's a great school. We're really, really learning a lot and we're having a great time. And that really picked up throughout um, the global community. But not everybody could have the whole story and realize where the school was, where it's come from, the insensitivity in the 666 post. So it just looked like satanic panic. Let's uh, counter that with my vote. Here you go, Sharon. I remember it was huge. I remember like, you know, people just read the headlines. And of course, some of the headlines were misleading. You know, right. heavy metal principal gets persecuted and, you know, heavy metal principals not allowed to like Ari Maiden. But the reality yeah. is, and I understand the parents and I understand the school. And even you even understand it, that yeah. you're leading a school. There's got to be some sort of... Uh, uh, correct protocol, we'll say, right? Yeah. And that's cool. But I'm happy that we're talking to you Me too. <laughs> about this because it's a cool story either, either way, right? No, I, I'm glad that the counter petition, you know, started with your capacity as a principal, right? If let's not get rid of somebody if they're doing a good job. And if the students think you're doing a good job, I mean, that's the ones that really count at the end of the day, right? That's, that's your constituency, as we can say. Right. And it was still super quiet at school, even though the petition got up to 24,000 votes. It was quiet at school, but both families, parents, staff, and students were supportive of me in ways that were quiet. Um, for, you know, we had a football game, a bunch of parents wore Iron Maiden shirts to the football game to support their kids. Uh, wear uniform school, students would wear Iron Maiden under their shirt and just show me that they, they you know, they stand in solidarity or they give me the irons as we're walking down the hall. So there was a lot of really great support from the kids and from the community, both parents, staff, students alike. And the cheerleaders all got Eddie tattoos on their shoulders. So yeah. that was a nice touch as well. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Do you prefer the Paul Diano era or the <laughs> Bruce Dickinson era? Blaze there. Or the Blaze. Which, which do you prefer? The first two Iron Man noms are later on. <laughs> yeah, I like Bruce Dickinson. Okay. <laughs> Alan too is Bruce Dickinson. I'm more Paul Diano. So it's okay. Just, just so we're all clear. All right. <laughs> and you also had Danko Jones. Canadian artist. That's right. Out to you, and he said, "You know what? I support you fully. Come to my show. Did you go see him? Did you meet with him? Did I you did. Talk to him? Oh, you I did. did. What did he tell you? 
Uh, it, it was a great show actually. And he told me he had my back and he experiences, I think many artists, anybody in the public eye experiences uh, challenges with communities that don't understand this. So he understood and uh, gave me a cool little souvenir that um, I think it was back here actually that he got from where Rob? We got to dig through the archives. Hey Rob, how you oh, doing? Here's the trouble. Hey Rob, there is. There's the troublemaker. Where would you poke your head in there, Rob? Rob, look at all because of it's all because of you. It's all because of you. You started all this. <laughs> it's my fault. Yes. That's what I say every day to my wife. Buddy, you're an instigator. Twenty-four-seven. <laughs> Let me see. Let's around. take a look at that. Let's take a look. What is that? It's like a single. Oh, Rainmaker. Okay. Rainmaker. Yeah, Rain. And it's signed by. Uh, Bruce Dickinson as well. So that's what, what? Dankle Joe gave me, which was pretty cool. Like that was that, that's so what cool. I wanted to ask you. That did anybody from Maiden's Camp reach out to you or say, hey, uh, we've got your back? Or um the photographer, the official photographer, uh sent me an email. Actually, he didn't even send me an email. He sent me a, a big poster. Was that back here? Yeah, he'll take it off the wall and bring it in. <laughs> and it just showed up in the mail and I didn't even know about it. And this wow. it's amazing poster of Bruce at the one of the concerts that we had gone to. And we had a similar picture from where we stood right in front of the stage. So we went and got it framed. I'll bring it oh, in. Wow. And, oh yeah, I'll get out of the way here. All right, look at that. Oh yeah, good photo. Wow, wow, look at that. Oh, so that's amazing. John McMurtry took that and uh, I think he's traveling with Maiden to um, Hamilton when they come this uh, fall in October. Mm -hmm. So he's reached out. So he's going to try to get me in the trooper room, which sounds pretty cool. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, John. If you're listening, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, Are there yeah, yeah. Posters so put to good use. Any any correlation between all this brouhaha and your retirement? No, no. I could have retired December 2020. Uh, before the event I could have retired during or after the event but um I, it was the pandemic and I wanted to stick it through for the kids I wanted to have a sense of normalcy back for everybody we had the extracurriculars come back last year and uh it was a really amazing way to go out so I went out I retired on my own terms but that's a good question I get asked that one a lot Alan okay would you do it again if you can, if you had a, if you had a DeLorean and you could travel back in time. Well, she wouldn't be at an Audi rowdy, uh, Audi rally then if you had a DeLorean. Well, no, I would I'm, just, I'm just saying a DeLorean just for traveling purposes back in time. Would you, yeah. if you could go back in time, would you post Eddie 666 again? No. Would you post the Iron Maiden with you and your husband? Just sort of like, would you post that picture? Uh, probably. Yeah, it's no on the same on the same account see that you know the principal's a metal fan a woman principal you know in her whatever decade i'm in is mm. a metal fan i think that that's an unusual thing for a principal in high school so if it helps to connect with a couple more kids who feel like they can come and chat with me if they're having a problem i would but i definitely would not do eddie holding 666 i wouldn't do anything with that number anymore yeah, I, so I since then, my Iron Principal, since I retired, I've retired the Twitter and the Instagram for at Eden Principal as well. And I've just started my own and it's super small and I'm not even sure. I'm kind of done with posting for a while. So I'm enjoying just uh, scrolling and looking at everybody else for a while. Good. So will you Good. continue to listen to the song Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden? Of course. <laughs> well, that's the most important. Absolutely. Word. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in a way, you know, you kind of had a cool story and in a way you got to sort of, you know, get a little more, a peek into the Iron Maiden world and Danko Jones and it just, you know, it's definitely, it, it wasn't like you did something bad. You went on a shooting rampage or you hurt right. somebody. You didn't do anything. You're just an innocent little mistake. And I think and Jimmy, that's why I wanted to talk to you about this because uh, I want the bigger perspective to be had by people to understand that um, it's just not people thinking that I'm terrible because I listened to Iron Maiden. There's a bigger story to it. And uh, my parents are great parents. The kids are great parents. They're not mine anymore. I'm gone, but <laughs> you know, it's a great community. Uh, and they weren't just out to get me willy nilly. There's a history, there are things going on. And it was 
uh, bad timing and a bad decision on my part. It had nothing to do with the timing. It was a bad decision, a poor decision on my part to post it unthinkingly. I should have thought I should have known better. I'm working in that school for five years. I should have been aware of uh, the sensitivities around um, something like that, something like the number, I think the most. So I lesson learned, wouldn't do it again, but uh, I'll still continue to enjoy Iron Maiden. And now I get to uh, meet people like Alan and Jimmy. I think it's pretty awesome. I think so too. And did, did uh, enrollment at the school go up or down after this event? That's what I want to know. I want to go to the Iron Maiden school. Like, oh, that's what's going to happen, right? Great. We can yeah. wear our shirts. Oh, we probably went online after that. There was probably another wave. <laughs> I'll go, I want to go to the, it's considered the Iron Maiden school now. Right? No, I, I wouldn't push it that far. Now they're going to get start a petition against us. No, my I, friend, I remember, the Iron Maiden principal, or imp for short, but yeah, I'm just sharing. And, and in a way, you know, when the principal likes Iron Maiden, do the students get turned off of Iron Maiden? <laughs> no. Because yeah, yeah. if my mother liked Iron Maiden, I don't know if I'd liked Iron Maiden at the time. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah, no, just I don't saying. think so. I, I think that's the thing about building a community and building a relationship with students and having them know a little bit about you. That was I didn't know about Iron Maiden, know that I have chickens and think that's cool because they might have chickens too, right? Mm. So I just put out a lot of different ways for students to connect and to feel at home in this school and feel like even though it's a uniform school, which is unusual in my district, um, and it has this Christian history, you can still be yourself here. Good, good, good. Yeah. All right, Alan, should we end off with uh, the best Iron Maiden songs? Or maybe, what, what other bands Sharon. do you like? What other What's bands Sharon's like? favorite? Let's just go with Sharon's oh, favorite. Well, I like Wrath Child. Um, oh, that's Paul Viano. <laughs> good pick. Right. They made right. our top 10 list. The Flight of Icarus. There you go. Fly on your way like an eagle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> go ahead. Anything else? The Six of uh, Six and Over the Beast. Midnight. Um... <laughs> I don't know, what do you guys like? Oh boy, we get the whole discography. I love this. <laughs> Kevin writes, so people are writing in the chat as we speak. It's just I'm listening okay. to you. That's why the principle of the beast. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> the principle. Of Ouch. The beast. Here's Lucha saying, "I got shit for having long hair when I was in high school." Tom is saying, "I remember I wasn't allowed into a party because of my love for metal and that what I wore." But that all ended when people realized I was a good at boxing and fighting. Okay, that's cool. That is cool. <laughs> people like, you know, I'm just going to look at these comments here. If anybody else has any questions in the final minutes of our awesome. interview. Uh, Jimmy is very surgical here when I was talking about 666 and 616. So it's 616, the number of the beast, really. Just remember that. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm not changing the songs, Jim. <laughs> it's still rhyme. 616, the number. Okay. Um... And if anybody else has any questions, Tony's saying, I'm black metalhead, I win. I'm a black metalhead. So I guess he's referring to, I'm assuming, Tony, you're referring to your color of your skin because I know Tony. Um, that's cool. Everybody's inclusive. Everybody is uh, welcome to be a metalhead, correct? Absolutely. No. Yeah. No, and again, I think we got to go back to, uh, you know, we're happy to have Sharon on the show to clarify that it was an underlying issues and uh, things that were sensitive topics happening that we weren't aware of with the, with the clickbait that was going on. Exactly. And I thank you for, for sharing that and, and, and expanding upon that. So we know that it's, it was a bit of a sensitive time for the, for the school and, and the posting. So, you know, awesome. uh, I'm trying to think, of the, is there anything scholastically I need to ask her before, uh, you know, we, we let her go? Like there, they are, there, and Either there. or either. <laughs> Neither either nor or either or. <laughs> Why is there a K before no? <laughs> or is nothing. it no or is it no? Or ganat or nat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is the, <laughs> what is a clause? <laughs> what is a clause? Yeah. I could never figure it out. They're just all these sentences. This is a clause. Like, what the frick is a clause? Piece of a sentence. There you go. See, these are the answers we need, Alan. These are the answers we need. All right. On that note, thank you so much, Sharon. You're welcome to come back anytime if you ever want to discuss metal with us. Awesome. Uh, you are now yeah, we the have, principal yeah, we of the beast. We should get a top 10 show, a top 10 show happening with yes, Sharon. Yes. I think I yeah. want to have Sharon back. We'll get, we'll get Rob, who knows a lot about it, too, online. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. There we go. Rob, the troublemaker, we'll call him. You yeah. got it. All right. Have um, yourself a wonderful day, Rob. Thank have you. yourself a wonderful hey, day, Sharon. Sharon. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Very nice to meet you both. Thank you for having me on.
Enjoy your Rock day. on, everybody. <laughs>